Uh, thank you so much for everyone who's watching and everyone who's here uh, starting up our first episode of Hangout and Nerd Out uh, in 2023. So Happy New Year. We haven't seen you Ooh. since 2022. And uh, it's it's going to be a great year. Um, year of the rabbit for those, you know, like who are into uh, Chinese Zodiac. And um, on, with today we're doing our episode all on music. Um, really quickly to start off, uh, I'm Ginger, uh, one of the hosts, and here are my co-hosts. Hey, I'm Alex. Alex. I'm from Hackster as well. I do our video stuff. I'm David, uh, often known as iShotJR online, and I am community editor at uh, Make Magazine, which is uh, listing, and uh, also the host of this uh, event. Along yeah, with so... Yeah, so every episode we have our three hosts and three nerds. Um, we will introduce our nerds here in a minute, but let's just really quickly, our quick plug of our uh, companies that co-host this. You know, so we'll do a quick run through of Hackster and then we'll let David um, go through Make um, to tell you about our community. Um, so let me just do a quick screen share. Hackster. So um, if you are not familiar with it, please go to hackster.io. We are one of the world's largest community dedicated to learning um, hardware um, and anything from, you know, Arduino to advanced, you know, space rocket uh, uh, electronics. Um, we've been around since 2015, and it's one of the largest in the world, has a global reach over hundreds of uh, different countries. Uh, me, myself, I run the contest page. Uh, I run the, the fun, the funnest part of, you know, uh, Hackster which are the, 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 the contests. These are global campaigns uh, that we launched usually with partners with our whole community, different theme, um, all the way from drones, you know, to HMI. Um, and this year we're gonna have many more contests that, that's upcoming that covers um, like uh, climate change, you know, music or fashion. Um, and we and would love to for you to explore that as your journey. You, um, in electronics. So uh, please feel free to explore more around the, the site itself. Um, usually in the channels, we have uh, platform hubs that's specific to companies. We have community hubs. And then my favorite is actually also the topic hubs where you can explore the different topics. So um, let's say today we're covering music and you could go to this page and look at all the different um, uh, open source projects under music itself. And let's see if we can find it. Where is our music? Ah, right here. You can also look in the <laughs> in the header as well, or just go to hackster.io slash music. Yes, hackster.io slash music. You can join the community. I'm going to join now and, and look at all the different um, projects that's around the music that posted or from our users from around the world. Um, please check that out. And we also have awesome videos, you know, um, produced by Alex and uh, the uh, please follow us on our social subscribe to our newsletter and that's a quick rundown of hackster and i'll pass it on to david to talk about make awesome um big hackster fan myself uh Woo. don't think you can see it in my background but somewhere in the background in fact I, you were talking the hover games 3 came up on the on the contest uh, list there and uh was it the hover game no well, no it was there was some other NXP con contest that uh, there's a donkey car sitting over there that came from uh -huh. uh, the contest. And then you can't see it, but on the other side of this door over there, there's a drone hanging on the wall that was from the Hover Games uh, contest. Nice. Um, so big fan, uh, big fan of what you guys are doing. Um, yeah, so um, obviously I'm going to be uh, pushing the magazine. Uh, this is the current issue 83, and uh, it's on newsstands right now, or you can subscribe. Um, makezine.com is the best place uh, to get started with all that. It's our annual boards guide. Uh, there's a little pullout supplement uh, with a guide to 79 of the hottest uh, microcontrollers, FPGAs, and single board computers. And there's a bunch of little cool features about sort of trends that we've noticed, um, you know, uh, during the chip shortage. Actually, there's a whole piece on the chip shortage in the big part, which I wrote. and. Uh, and you know trends like uh, RP2040 and SP32 emerging during the ship shortage. Uh, if you go to uh, this little QR code, this little video where I talk about 
half a dozen of the boards that I thought were the coolest. And uh, there's a little AR app actually uh, that DigiKey made so you can check out um, some, of the, some of the boards sort of in 3D. Um, oh. The main thing I'm, I'm trying to uh, hype today though is our Discord server. Um, I just dropped a link into the, uh, into the chat, except for I sent it to the wrong group of people. So let's try doing that again. Just dropped a link in the right chat now. Uh, if you go to makezine.com slash go slash Discord, it's pretty easy to remember, even if I do paste it in the wrong place. Um, we'd love to see you on Discord. Uh, we have a sort of, well, we have uh, an after party as part of the event itself uh, in the Hangout and Nerd Out, but we have an after party after after party, um, which is in Discord. So if there's something you saw that you thought was cool, you know, hang out with us over there and we can talk about it some more. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of the main thing I wanted to, to hype today. Sweet. I am so excited about our guests today. Uh, should we uh, introduce them in order that they're going to show up? I believe that would be you first, David. All right. I'm super, super incredibly crazy excited about our uh, first guest. Uh, MC Francelot is renowned Ooh. for his clever and humorous lyrics that often reference popular culture and technology. Uh, he has released seven studio albums and performed at music festivals and conventions around the world. Oh, yeah. Hello. Beautiful. I'm really Look at excited. Me. I'm, I'm so important now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so rad because I saw you in Ann Arbor years and years ago. And it's so oh, exciting nice. to see him. Okay. Ginger's turn. Okay, so um, my nerd is Eric, and Eric's from UK. He's an electronic hobbyist uh, from Coventry, but you know we learned that he's Dutch. You know, moved from Holland, and he has built music gadgets since the early 1980s when synth band sparked his enthusiasm for electronic music. Um, he's actually a telecoms engineer by day. Uh, since the early 1990s, that's brought what brought him to UK. But around 2015, his love for making electronic music circuitry reignited his passion to develop the skills to take an idea from start to finish. So he publishes these like awesome open source audio and video projects for anyone to build, copy, and improve. And um, I ran into his one of his posts on LinkedIn, and it's like, oh my god, you need to be my nerd, you know, on this show <laughs> that we're having. Um, in January. So thank you so much, Eric, for joining our show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yes, I'm very uh, excited to uh, talk about any open source music uh, device uh, that, that I've built and, you know, how I do things. Um, okay, so my nerd is Thea Flowers. I'm so excited to have her back. Uh, uh, I interviewed her a couple of years ago for Hackster Cafe, our weekly interview show with cool people doing neat stuff with hardware. And oh my gosh, she not only is an amazing person who builds open source um, uh, modular synthesizer modules, um, she creates open source synthesizers and writes engaging technical articles. If you haven't seen her blog, you have to check it out at thea.codes. Uh, I'm hitting my mic because I'm so excited. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll get to see a little bit of that in a bit. She's located in Atlanta, Georgia. Let me spotlight you, by the way. And is a member of the Open Source Hardware Association Board of Directors. So rocking on so many different levels, but like creating cool modular synthesizer objects that are gorgeous and sound so cool, like sharing your knowledge through your amazing blog uh, with all these little interactive elements. Like you can drag stuff around and really learn about what's going on behind the scenes in these synthesizers it's so cool and then also like helping move the whole movement forward by working on the board of directors Thea welcome and I'm so excited to have you thank you I am excited to be here Woo! okay I, I just want to touch on something real quick uh the the zoom zoomiverse is kind of confusing we have uh we're in this uh this webinar right now there's also <laughs> the lobby so I just wanted to say people in the lobby get in here if you want to um, I see there's a bunch of people in the lobby that aren't in the webinar. You, you, we're not going to like see your face or it's just, you know, you, you're welcome to hang out in the lobby, but, 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 get in, but get in the webinar if you feel like it. Otherwise, it's cool. I'm seeing a lot of awesome comments in the, in the uh, lobby. Uh, Winter Bloom rocks. Hello from Arduino, Ben says. Uh -huh. uh, so oh, anyway, hey, sorry, let's, let's move on. I just wanted to yeah, address so the tech stack real quick. Am I the only one that's disappointed that none of us thought to do a remix of Let's Go Out to the Lobby for this show? <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> I've had such a week and actually, you know what, secretly I'm building a thing on my desk right now that Ooh. is a little bit relevant, but I don't have any music gadgets. 
Oh. You don't have any music gadgets. What is going? Oh my god! I took them to another place for, oh, for right, right, reasons. Right, right. Yeah, 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 I've got oh. I've got some little like Easter eggs in the background and stuff. I don't know if anyone caught this. Obi Wan. <laughs> cool. So let's jump into our first guest. All right, uh, take it away, Damien. All right, um, I'm MC Front a lot. I'm a nerdcore rapper. Uh, in a sense, I'm the original nerdcore rapper because I made up that term nerdcore hip hop uh, back in 2000 when I was just making uh, rap songs in MP3 form and sticking them on a web server I was in charge of and obscuring my face and identity. Um, and somehow over the years that morphed into a career and then I've been just doing that full time for almost 20 years. Uh, so if I look old and haggard, that's I have why. Damien, I have something just for you. Can you see my camera right now? Yes. <laughs> so it's nice. older than the internet. <laughs> I am not technically, well, I'm not older than ARPANET. I might be older than the term internet. Okay, nerd, Probably. get on with your thing. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so that's what I make is songs. And let's, I thought it would be fun I'm not like particularly expert at doing this quickly, but I, I thought I'd try and make a song <laughs> in my little 10 minutes. So let's do that. Um, this okay. is Reaper, which is my DAW, which means digital audio workstation. I've got some stuff prepped. So let's start with like a beat. We'll record here. We'll go uh, like a. <laughs> That's terrible. I am not a professional beatboxer. Let's see. Can we hear that? That playback, you can hear it? It's good? Yes? No? It sounds Sorry, amazing. I mean, it's great. Sorry. We're all on mute. It's great. You can, you can hear the playback. Okay. Yes, it's beautiful. So that'll do for the loop, right? So let's get rid of the rest of the garbage. And we don't like my beatboxing. So what we're gonna do is we'll leave the kicks on this track and we'll move the, oops. We'll move the snares. Hey Damien, maybe this you covered track. this and I wasn't paying attention, but what is this software? What are we what are we looking at here? It is, is called that... Reaper. It is nice. the best digital Reaper. audio workstation. Anyone who tells you otherwise is a fanboy. I <laughs> am a passionless uh, and rational critic of all such things. Here's my terrible beatboxing. So let's take the kick drum. And we'll stick it through this little MIDI trigger, which is just listening for loud noises. And we will pass it from there to this drum machine. And be like a little sweetener afterwards. There. Now we have a kick drum instead of my mouth noises. Let's do that over here also with the snare. Turn that on. And we hear that it is double triggering, which we don't want, so we'll just turn it down a little. Still double triggering, buddy. Stop it. That helped. And now let's add a little uh, hi-hat. This whole loop is a little janky, but who cares? And again, I don't like the snapping, so let's trigger the MIDI and send it to this drum machine, and then we will have 
a hi-hat. And that's not great, but who cares? This is a demo. Let's see, what do we want? T, time signature. Let's call that one bar. Now we have a bar, easy. Let's just copy that out a bunch. No, we didn't want that. Let's do it every one bar. And now we have a loop that plays. Let's make a bass line. All right, bass line. Bow, 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 bow. So the thing that I use, or I'm about to use, to turn this audio into MIDI and send that into another, into this synthesizer, it's actually a sampler that has a bass in it, this thing's janky as hell. I don't think it's gonna work, really, but let's find out. Well, I don't even hear it. There it is. <laughs> you know, that's, that's janky, but serviceable. I don't like that part, but this part's okay. So let's copy that out, why don't we? I don't like that. Let's do it every other bar. Now, why don't we have some vocals? Front of that, why are you showing us? I just looked at OBS and I see that you can't see my plugin windows. Well, that's all right. Front of that, why are you showing us all of the stuff that you're doing on your computer? Why are you showing us everything on your computer? Front of that. That, uh, that's a hit, you guys. And so, Tim, and I just got to jump in uh, while you're doing all this. The uh, the coin, uh, the term jank core was coined. Uh, how you <laughs> how you feeling about that? And this uh, is the this is the best comment that we received on the show of all time, I believe, uh, at least of 2023. Uh, Phil Nelson says, "Sounds like we're negotiating the world's sexiest modem." <laughs> that's about right. Hold on, we need a harmony. Front of that, why are you? We need a better harmony. Front a lot, why are you showing? Front a lot, 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 front a lot. Front a lot, why are you showing us all of the things that you're doing on your computer? Why are you showing us you show us on your Wish you would stop. Stop Don't. All right, <laughs> that's a hit. So let's put that here. And we'll turn on our compressor, and we'll turn on a little tape delay squiggler. Why are you showing us all of the stuff that you're doing on your computer? Why are you showing us everything on your computer? Well, I don't. All right, success. I'm gonna call that success. Um, usually I don't sing, in case that wasn't apparent. Uh, I spend most of my time rapping. Um, I rap about data encryption and uh, sometimes comic books, uh, asthma inhalers, anything that's you know near and dear to my heart. Uh, that's why I called it nerdcore because that seemed to be the only stuff that I wanted to rap about. Hey. It's not that cool. Um, but hey. that's me. That's my whole my whole Thanks deal. So I that's we're been little... ten minutes, right? Yeah. We're a little over on time, uh, but I wanted you to finish the track. Can I have a, a special request? 
Can we like get that as an MP3 that we can like put on our social and stuff like that to show like the sick right. track we just dropped? Right now I'll mix it down. All right. All right, everyone is predicting in the comments that that is going to go to the number one in the Jank Core charts uh, for 2023. <laughs> that was so cool. Can we can we make that our theme? I don't see why not. Uh, Ginger, <laughs> you, you're you're introducing our next guest, yeah? Yeah, no no problem. I uh, I can start anytime anywhere so my name is eric hostfein i'm i'm part of a bunch of guys who connect up all their equipment uh once a month uh in a place called a royal lemmington spa uh, that's near to where i live in in coventry in the united kingdom and uh, every now and then we are being invited to play with our kit we don't have particular songs or anything like that we just hang as i said we connected together we have a uh a MIDI clock that I that I built, this uh, yellow device, and you have all these little boxes that everybody then uses to connect to their own equipment. So when I press start and everybody starts at the same time, and there's some smart stuff in there because sometimes you have to start stop your own equipment, and when you use that little box, it always makes certain that you're nice synced up with everybody else, and uh, you can see we're on stage. Uh, at the uh, Herbert Art Gallery here in, in Coventry, where we had quite an audience uh, of people walking past and sitting down and lying down even on the floor just to, uh, to see what we were doing. Um, now, that I've been doing now for quite a few years, and I've, so I've been building stuff for the, for the, the band, maybe I should call them, uh, but I also like to build my own uh, instruments and it's actually not that long ago that I decided to, uh, you know, to to build a website and to properly put all the the, the products, the modules that I, that I make uh, on the website. Uh, so I started with this module, which is actually sits here in this little box, which is a a sequencer that uses uh, parametric equations, so some mathematical functions to create all sorts of uh, patterns um, but since you know I don't have too much time to talk about everything I wanted to pick out one particular module that I'm actually working on at the moment it's not finished but I've uh, I've managed to uh, design the front panel uh, and of course the the module itself um, this is three identical modules that you can put in one of those boxes this one, these are uh, small desktop uh, Euro rack cases. And what you can do, you can build these modules or you buy them, of course, and you can put them in these cases. So they sit ne nicely uh, next to each other. This one already has a power supply uh, inside. So what you can do, you can build those modules. You don't have to worry about the power supply that's already in the uh, in the case. And that's how you can build your own synthesizer, modular synthesizer. Um, and that's what I like doing. So um, I have to play this over the, the microphone. Let's let's have a, a listen to the, the modules. When you start it up, the idea of Planet uh, Drone, as I call it, is that when you switch it on, it picks a completely random patch or a sound. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. It's like a chocolate box, <laughs> right? Um, and then the idea is to change all sorts of settings in the uh, uh, in in the patch down to you know you get some really weird stuff. And by doing that and having more than one, you can build a whole soundscape very quickly. Um, so I'll, I'll turn up the first one, which has uh, a sample of our previous guest. Wait a second, is there a guest reception right now? This is awesome. Now, I'll just change some settings and I turn it into something like really quite droney and then I'll carry on to the next module.
So that's actually within seconds, I already had something. Uh, what I can do, if I turn down the volume of one of them and I press a button, it now loads a completely new patch. So let me turn the other one down. And I only have a few patches at the moment. Let's see what it does here. Oh, let me. Hope you can hear that. Let me press a button. You can save. If you, if you like a particular setup, you can save that. So let me press that button. Oh, I hear it now. It was a little quiet before. I was about Hello. to jump in. We're not getting anything right now. It, we some stuff was coming through that, earlier. That is, yeah, that that's a very low frequencies, but this likes okay. with airplanes flying around. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so you can create all sorts of weird drones, and that's the whole idea of of, uh, of Planet Drone. Um, well, yeah. So, well, I mean, what, what what can I tell about it? It's it's you start off with your uh, your your little. Uh, it's not so much the printed circuit board, right? It's a, uh, what do you call that particular uh, board with all the little holes in there? It's a, a really breadboard. A bread, well, it's a bread. So this is the breadboard indeed. So, and oh, that's sorry, where, perf board, perf board. That's it, perf board, yes. And, and what you do is, uh, you know, together with the uh, Arduino, it works within the Arduino, by the way. Um, you hook that all up. And, you have, and this is a little audio uh, device because the Arduino itself, this one, does not have audio, so you need a little audio board. This is some power uh, for the for the Arduino, and here you can already see the dials that I was turning. I already had that. I already had a pretty good idea of what I wanted that module to look like, so I've already sort of started to build it that way. And this is what you see here. This is the um, can make it a bit bigger. That's the printed circuit board uh, that you then put together, and then together with uh, one of these. I, I have a, a company here in the UK that I that I usually go to, and this guy is really good in uh, doing digital printing. He does it for medical equipment, so it, it's really very sturdy, and you know you can hardly scratch it. It's really if you quite uh, good. stop screen sharing for a second, we can look at a close up of that. Of what? Of the of the thing you just showed. We, it's very tiny for us because of the screen oh, share. Is it? Is it? Oh my! You can't God. see the artwork very clearly because the the screen is mostly your your share. Ah, technical opportunities. Opportunities. <laughs> Let's see. So that's the. It looks gorgeous in mini though. It's so, so gorgeous. Oh wow! Um, yeah. So I mean, I I enjoy doing all the the design as well. Sitting down and just have a think about you know, where do you want the, the switches, where do you want the buttons, um, and you know, sometimes I've I've worked also with an artist a little while ago. Uh, am I still sharing? Um, oh, you I'll are. Looks back. great. Okay. You are still, you're still sharing. And I just got to jump in. We're we're going a little over on time now. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it short, but so so the other one of the modules that I built, uh, so they uh, let me quickly go to this one. Uh, the the actual artwork was done by someone from Argentina. I'd never met her, but I saw some uh, designs uh, of her on uh, on the web, and I thought that would be really great to have it as a background. And so I had two versions, just a black and white version and one full color, and she uh, she did that for me. And that's really nice to have a bit of collaboration in, in that world of uh, Eurorack design because you don't see a lot of full color modules. Yeah, I think, I mean, I can talk on for ages. We should have a separate show, just just the spotlight on me. But uh, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's my story. Gorgeous. <gasps> Time for Thea. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's really bringing out the like random singing habit <laughs> yeah take it away awesome so alex said that they didn't know what i was gonna do and i also don't know what i'm gonna do so <laughs> you know what hi i'm thea i do too much stuff um 
I own a modular synthesizer company, so I'm glad that y'all just saw some modular synthesizer stuff because I didn't want to explain it. Um, <laughs> so I make synthesizer modules as well. Um, and they're they're often very cute, like this one here, um, or silly, like this big honking button that is a button that literally honks at you. Um, it's also a sampler, um, so you can load your own samples on there and do all kinds of cool stuff with them. Um, I also make very beautiful modules that I think are, are very neat, um, like this one here. Um, and I also do, like, I, I do everything I can in-house, basically. I I rarely, if ever, send something out for manufacturing, so I do a lot of, like, mid-scale manufacturing stuff, which means, like, placing my own PCBs and manufacturing all of that myself. Um, so, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, Everything I do is open source. Um, every product that I have out there, literally every part of it is open source from the board design to the documentation to the factory setup scripts. The whole thing is open source. And I am super, super all about open source. Um, so yeah, I, I thought I'd share with y'all some of the projects I'm working on right now that might be interesting to you. Um, and I am always, always happy to chat with folks about open source hardware and synthesizers and things like that. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, if Zoom will cooperate. Hey, Thea, can I just jump in real quick? Uh, we haven't mentioned, but uh, <clears throat> if people want to ask uh, questions, if you want to uh, use the question and answer uh, facilities of the Zoom, it'll make it way easier for us to, to see your questions. Most of the comments are just people kind of getting excited and showing affection <laughs> for our amazing guests. Um, but drop stuff in the Q and A, and then and then we'll be able to actually get to those in a little bit. And awesome. sorry, please go ahead. Of course. So, like I said, I run a synth company. It's called Winterbloom. Um, we have a handful of of synth modules out there. What I really wanted to show here is just how serious we are about open source. So, for example, you can come to one of these products. Um, not only is like there a manual and the kit available, but you can literally go straight to GitHub and you can see all of the source code for it, um, from the user guide to the hardware, everything is there. Um, one of the things that I'm super serious about is documenting open source and making it possible for people to understand how other circuits work. So Alex mentioned that I have a blog. I On this blog, I really try to make very interactive and visual ways of communicating how certain things work. It could be a circuit, it could be software, it could be, you know, whatever, but I, I really want to make sure that people can touch and feel and understand what is going on. Um, so just a small example from one of my personal favorite articles that I've ever written. Um, you can play around with the different parameters of this circuit, like the resistance and capacitance, and see how it affects the signal that's generated. Um, and this whole post is just full of these things, these explanations for how all of these circuits work along with reasons why the components are, are picked the way they are and all this stuff. So I love doing stuff like this and I really want to empower other people to be able to do this as well. And I'll get to that in just a second. Um, hold on, Zoom is in my way. Zoom, get out of my way. There we go, okay. <laughs> so speaking, Speaking of um, wanting to make things more accessible for people, I'm working on making it possible to easily embed KiCad files into web pages um, in their native format. So you don't have to export them or anything like that. So you can place your KiCad schematics and your board designs onto a page. And this all sort of got inspired by one of my build guides for one of my modules. And this build guide actually shows people where to put each surface mount component and allows them to, you know, sort of walk through and check off all the ones that they've already placed and all that stuff is really useful when you're putting together something that has a lot of tiny components and you want to do something like that. But from a bigger picture, I really wanted um, people to be able to share not only uh, like an interactive, you know, sort of build guide here, but also just share it so people can look at it. So one of the cool things that I'm working on now and um, folks in the community have generously sponsored me to work on this. So I'm really excited about it. 
um, is Key Canvas. So Key Canvas um, lets you view your PCAD schematics in the browser. Um, this is an early build, so there are some bugs, but um, here's a schematic. You can click around on the symbols. You can see the properties. You can look at the data sheet. You can um, even look at like the specific you know, manufacturer part number that I picked for this thing. Like whatever details you add in your KeyCAD schematic, people can see here. And it's so much more useful than a PDF that doesn't have any of this information included. Um, so I, I'm really excited about even just the schematic side of things, just to be able to share this and point someone to a page and say, hey, like you can go and look at how I did the design here. Um, I think it's really cool. But also there is a PCB viewer and the PCB viewer is um, even more interesting in ways because you can you know, look at all the different layers on the PCB. This is just showing the front copper layer right now. Um, and it will also let you inspect footprints and things like that. And you can show and hide different layers and walk through stuff. It's, it's super neat. And I think this is really gonna make sharing designs and just being able to quickly um, review things and get help from people when you're able to just send them a link that has your design there and they don't have to download it and open up PCAT and all this stuff if you're looking for some quick feedback. Yeah, this is such an amazing tool. You, you just touched on something which was uh, that people can support you, but you didn't say how. Can you just tell us? Because like people are A, freaking out about your documentation and, <laughs> and I hope you get a chance to see some of this stuff because, you know, people are just going bonkers about your blog, about your documentation. Um, but what you're doing with this is so cool. And I wanted to just know, how can people support you specifically on this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can support me on GitHub sponsors. Um, uh, here's my info. You can find me on the web at thea.codes. You can find me on GitHub at, thea, uh, at thea Codes, And you can find me on Twitter as at Thea Valkyrie. Um, go to any of those. Find me on one spot and you'll find links to everything else. But GitHub sponsors is the way that you can sponsor my work on Key Canvas specifically. And I have been dropping those links into the chat. So anyone who's in the chat, you can just scroll up and click on those. Awesome. I okay. have so many windows open. I got no idea what's going on. So two more, two more things I want to share with you all before I um, disappear. Uh, <laughs> one of them is that y'all love the front panels that um, the previous speaker was talking about. Um, I've actually been working on tools to help people get art from vector programs into KiCad so that you can use printed circuit boards to make your front panels. Um, so this tool is called Gingerbread. Um, you can basically drop an SVG into here. And I'm just gonna open up this example here. And you know, with specific layer names and things like that, it can actually turn it into a KiCad PCB. And you can preview how it's going to do everything before you actually export. And it is so fast. Like you click this button and it's, and it's done. Like it, it's ready to go and it's in your clipboard and you can just paste it in the keycad. Um, so I'm working on a tool for that too. Um, it works pretty well right now, but I'm always looking for more feedback on that. Finally, I mentioned that I do mid scale manufacturing and someone actually, I saw a question about do I hand place everything or do I use a pick and place? I use a pick and place and I'm actually working on an open source pick and place project um, that was started by Stephen Hawes um, and Opulo. And it's called the Lumen Pick and Place. And I'm, I'm helping out as a volunteer um, with documentation and community management, um, but also making some very interesting mods and helping out behind the scenes, um, including building my own pick and place control board, which I wrote an article about um, that is pretty ridiculous. Um, and this article actually shows a very early version of Key Canvas because I wanted people to be able to look at the schematics and see how they worked. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I got. <laughs> Sweet, thank you so much, Thea. Oh yeah, again, everyone, we're dropping all these links into the into the channel. So and we'll also publish a blog afterwards. Ginger does these amazing blog posts where we're going to pull together all these resources that people have shared and and the links that we're dumping into the chat as we go, but um, yeah, more stuff to come. So we have some questions in the Q&A. It would be rad to bring back all of our panelists for a 15 minute Q&A session, and then we'll all go over to the lobby, over to the Hangout thing, and you'll be able to turn on your camera and mic if you wish and chat with these rock stars. Isn't that amazing? 
I'm like starstruck that I get to chat with all y'all. But uh, yeah, it's so uh, cool. So we did, you did answer the question about the pick and place. Um, let's flip over to a question for Eric from John, uh, who says, uh, perhaps I missed it, but are your boards and panels for sale? Eric, not seeing that option on your website. And, uh, you know, anyone else could answer this as, for yourselves as well. Uh, after we get Eric, um, how can we support you other folks? Yeah, sure. No. So um, what I do, I tend to build a small batch and then I put them on, on eBay just to fund the next project. And I put everything on my GitHub uh, you know, space. So it's again, it's also all open source uh, projects. So for this particular project, uh, Planet Drone, I have 18, that's one eight, uh, printed circuit boards ready to be, you know, put together. Uh, it's not, they're, not, they're only partially ensemble, uh, assembled. So I will build probably a batch of 18 and depending on how popular it is, I might, might do more, but they will be very small, uh, small batches because it's, you know, cost money, isn't it? So <laughs> I have to fund everything before I sell it. But uh, so the answer is yes, I do, but not often. So you really have to uh, follow me on, uh, on social media uh, in order to find out. Small batch artisanal PCBs. Love it. What about Thea and MC Front a lot? How do people get your stuff and support you? We always kind of, already kind of answered this a little bit with Thea, but yeah. Um, frontalot.com has the gateway to purchasing music with money, which is like this old school concept <laughs> that we used to, uh, we used to talk about all the time. Do you have enough money for the new public enemy record? No, I have to wait for my allowance. It was a whole thing. <laughs> uh, these days, less so. But, uh, it's still an option. So I, I, like most artists, uh, musicians now are just sort of on the corner busking. Like, please, my hand is out. <laughs> <laughs> all, all payments are optional. Uh, but are you ever going to offer like a frontal lot branded headlamp? You know, I looked into that. I could not get any of the headlamp people to call me back. I called all the major headlamp companies. I was like, look, I just want to embroider my band name on the little elastic part. The rest <laughs> of it can be your normal headband. And I want you to wholesale them to me. And they were like crickets. So I don't know. Never going to happen unless some artisanal elastic headband maker wants to get in touch with me and then i can just buy the headbands and swap out the or buy the lamps and swap out the headbands this is real important stuff for the call i'm glad we're talking about it <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's awesome can i grab another q a uh, i just want to yeah. grab one uh this is bill van lu he's our local uh stem superstar here in ann arbor a really awesome teacher and uh involved with the north coast module collective yes i'm trying to give a lot of shout outs i'm trying to make it real smooth so it's not sounding like i'm doing that uh, but he had a question for thea um what are you using for the simulation examples in your blog post they are astonishingly well designed and useful to demonstrate the concepts Thea. yeah so um nobody's gonna like this answer <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just vanilla JavaScript for each one of those circuits. I write a, a separate simulation program for them. And then I have some common shared code that I use for drawing stuff on canvas, but yeah, it's, it's just JavaScript. I just write each one as needed. <laughs> cool. I have a quick question for you folks. Um, We've talked about how Reaper is unpopular because it's passionless and vanilla JS for blog posts is an unpopular answer. I want to know what y'all's most controversial equipment opinions are. Ooh. Do you have any hot takes that you feel like would make what? you a pariah if people knew? This is your chance to be a pariah. I, you know, I make myself a pariah among all of my rap friends by constantly telling them they need to buy and use in-ear monitors on stage. I, I see them on tour. They're like, oh yeah, it's, you know, day nine of tour. My voice is all blown out. And then I will hassle their ear holes for nine minutes with my spiel about buying 
250 bucks worth of wireless rack gear and bringing it with you and never ever straining your voice again because monitors in live clubs are terrible and having your voice big and loud in your ear is the only way to do wonderful rap performances except that everyone else who does wonderful rap performances doesn't use that <laughs> so i must be wrong but i'm gonna keep saying it Breath. so i i use sonar professional which is the uh the the, the door that uh uh, Frontlot was talking about as well. So where you record all your music, I do have two albums that, and I use prof uh, Sona Professional for that, which is something that nobody uses anymore. It used to be, be called Cakewalk if you're as old as I am. Uh, yeah, yeah, Cakewalk. Uh, yeah, but that's so Sona Professional. If you say that, everybody will look at you like, what? <laughs> what are you using? <laughs> old stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> I. So for me, I don't know if I have like one most controversial opinion. I feel like my existence is a controversial opinion. Like I, <laughs> I do things in such a weird way because I, my, my company, Winterbloom is basically just me and a production assistant. And that makes all the choices that I make in terms of engineering and documentation and marketing and all that stuff, just absolutely bananas compared to anybody else so <laughs> like you know i i work with technologies that are older i work with things that are familiar with to me i um never try to be the bleeding edge of anything i want my stuff to be easy to understand and approachable and not earth shattering or groundbreaking i'm not going to be at every nam trying to you know sell everybody every synthesizer module i have like my job is making open source stuff and helping people learn how to do it themselves. And the fact that I sell synthesizers is kind of just, it's like a side quest for me. So. <laughs> I mean, I hope I hope you get a chance to see the comments, dude, because everyone is just squeeing over your docs. They're so excited about all the projects and stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm not trying to shut down your take, but just everyone thinks it's <laughs> awesome. So. Maybe. Yeah, no, I, I tend to make things. Yeah, that not controversial like. enough. Not controversial uh, enough. <laughs> I make things that people like. They just don't like the way that I make them. <laughs> um, yeah. Everybody like, loves you. Like everyone's like, oh yeah, I got I got I sent all my stuff off the JLC PCB for assembly and everything. And I'm like, cool. I'm doing it in-house, like a moron. That's like way more fun. That's fun. That's way more fun. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, do we want to get that it's last uh, Q&A? I just want to do a yeah, time yeah, check yeah. here. we got about three minutes before we need to do the complicated move thing. So let's let's get this other Q&A. Someone want to? You want to read it? <clears throat> sure. I don't know who's addressed to, though, as well. I was hes hesitant. Oh, it says, were you the one? Eric. Who... Oh, Eric. Okay, Eric, this is for you. Uh, were you the one who made a pitch generator with a 5-5-5 five, five, five circuit? Could that be used as a sort of theremin with two potentiometers? And if you could, can you explain to us what a 555 five, five even is while we're in there? I deny any knowledge on that. I, I'm <laughs> sure it's not. No. It sounds like a, an Atari oh. punk console circuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, 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 can anyone answer this question? I don't know who this is question that, was for. Is that covered? Let's pull up the S block. I think that might be Jimmy Rogers, maybe. I could be wrong. But uh, there's no. definitely <laughs> ones like that around. Let me check. The answer was no, you weren't the one. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, yeah, sorry. Have a look, have a look, just Google it, I guess is the answer for that one. Cause it's- uh, I'm gonna try answer, and find it for you. <laughs> Here's this for you. Two more minutes. Any uh, any other questions we, we wanna source internally here? Or was there anything in the chat that we didn't grab or that was interesting? Fellow hosts, what are your equipment hot takes, especially for music? Hot takes, I don't know. I, I mean, so I was so excited for this because I don't know if you can tell, I don't know if you see like the MPCs and this size and samplers and OP1s and crap everywhere. I don't know what my, I'll tell you what um, my, I'll tell you what my, this isn't a hot take, but I'll tell you my two favorite things right now. This is my uh, little Zoom field recorder, uh, which is awesome. You can just, uh, you can make like, I don't know, four track uh, little songs anywhere on it with, with nothing, kind of like a hardware. Well, you can't do quite the same looping, but this is my new and favorite bestie is, ah, it's plugged in, uh, the SP404 Mark oh, II. I, I would just like vibe with this all night. Uh, it's a sampler, right? 
Yeah, yeah, it's a sampler. So this is kind of this is this is maybe like a hardware equivalent for kind of what Front Lot was doing. But I don't. Oh, here's my hot take. I don't like to use computers at all. <laughs> I sit at a computer all day. I just want to touch knobs, and this is how I do that right now. I, <laughs> yeah, for you yeah, yeah com there. computers were a mistake. Let's yeah. let's be clear. Yeah, I yeah. Hot take. I don't like the MPC either. The workflow on it sucks. I like this workflow. This is the mm. workflow. Okay, those are my takes. I have the opposite hot take, which is that like, oh, sort of the opposite. Okay, so uh, every piece of music that you hear on Hackster videos is oh. something that I created on my iPad with a little app called Groovebox, where they have all these different loops with different instruments and stuff, and you just stack them up, and you can like, and then I pull them into GarageBand on the iPad and stick them together and like fade them in and out and stuff. And my hot take slash pariah thing is that I don't have to be... I really want to be super precious about everything, but for video backing tracks, it doesn't have to be like a foreground thing. It can just be something that like you hear an echo of in the background. It doesn't have to be pretty and nice. And I have to tell myself that constantly because it would be so easy for me to spend like eight hours noodling on like, we have to capture the spirit of the thing. And you know, and like, it, you really don't. You can just make it on the iPad and like, and that way you don't have to worry about licensing. Uh, and there's all these little apps to make it easier. So if people are intimidated by um, by making their own music, you can start with loops and stuff. I do acoustic music and stuff. I'm like, I write songs, but also for like our video stuff, iPad. <laughs> iPads, it's like Legos or Tinker Toys for music. There's I got a no hot take on your hot take. For, I'll go to yeah. make music. There's no wrong way Spicy. to make music. Just make yeah. music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ginger, you're, you're a host. Do you have a music hot take for us? You know, my current hot take is gamelan, Balinese gamelan Ooh, yeah. music. And, you know, like I was actually at the uh, um, at the instrument maker's house and they showed me the uh, um, um, the um, what is that crucible? They're like the, the hundred year crucible that they used to make these like gum, like a gamelan, uh, uh, the, the um, um, what is it called? Symbols, right? The, uh, uh, um, so that that's pretty like my my hot take right now in terms of you know like really traditional like I, I would love to see how a hand pan is made um yeah so so but now, I think we, oh sorry go ahead um did you have something else to share I just wanted to explain the next thing that's happening yeah yeah that's okay. transition 